primary goal was to really tone down whatever you are attaining in your life. There is one thing more important. Praise God. It is good to really get the best education. It is good to really get the good job. It is good to have the nice things and the comfortable things of life. There is something far above that. That is getting right with God, being in the kingdom of God now, and inviting as many people today into the kingdom of God. That's the supermost thing that God has really chosen us for. Praise God. Praise God. So I did it in a very uh, peaceful way, in a time of joyful way, but articulately every evening I, f I find time for this. Praise God. So uh, as far as, as, a, as, a, as a parent, there are some, some desires, you know, it may sound selfish, but I know what is going to be permanent, what is going to be everlasting. So praise God for uh, having the time together and then extend the time with the body of believers here in Baika. Amen. Last time when I was here, you were meeting in a hotel. Today, God made it possible to be back in the, in the home church. A special praise God for God's favor for you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. This morning, I have a word for you. I have been seeking the Lord uh, prayerfully, and I got the assurance that this is what I should speak here today. Praise God. But before I get into the word of God, I want to greet some of my family members. Uh, 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 each one of you, you are very dear to me. I, I pray that every time when we are in the presence of God, whether you are in your family prayer, whether you are in your personal prayer, praise God, the Spirit of God is desiring one thing for you. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. I remember when I was in engineering school, I used to attend a a, 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 a CPM church, you know, I'd never been to that place, you know, but one of my friends, it was near to my a college, so I used to go there. Something that really caught my attention there was, whether it is a prayer, whether it is a song, whether it's a preaching, they will end it with a time of rejoicing in the Lord in tongues and in worship. Amen. Praise God. Even though I don't, uh, there are other things which I don't agree. This is something I really Learn from my life. Whether I kneel down before the Lord in prayer, it has to end with a time of celebration is my spirit joined with the spirit of God and shout glory and hallelujah. And, my, and I am freed from my environment into have an ultimate fellowship and communion with the Lord. That is why Apostle John, writing to the believers in Ephesus and all to the circular churches, he reminded his choice. Don't get with drunk. That's what people do to forget their agony, their problem. But he personally reminded them in his writing and it is recorded in the scriptures don't do that even modern language every state in the nation is really giving free license to really enjoy marijuana they put government stores to serve it across the land multiple outlets and the government is making much money because people are so peaceless so they say go and buy it and enjoy life free yourself from this trouble for 15 minutes believers believers if you are not Filled with the Spirit of God. Other things is going to fill you and distract you. So, again I say, it, even though it is not my word, I want to give you an extra invitation every time. Find the time to get filled with the Spirit of God. Praise God. Some people have a tendency that filling with the Spirit of God is, is really like pulling a great load. No, I have to really... No, it is so easy. When you read a psalm... In the next passage, it's very clearly given by reading a psalm, by singing a song. Then it's turned into a spiritual song. By that, by the Spirit of God creates a melody in your heart, glorifying God. And there it starts a flow and becomes an overflow. Praise God. That is what is the true spiritual life of a believer. If you believe so, you can say amen. 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 Adishyam pravartiyan daivatin ayiram stotram. Alpam pravartiyan daivatin padin ayiram stotram. Oru kuravum goda adha sushi ke daivatin kodi kodi stotram. This was his repetitive word every Sunday. Praise God, that man never lacked anything, any, any meaningful thing in his life. This morning, whatever may be your situation, you look at that situation and say, Adishyam ayi nartha daivatin ayiram stotram. Alpam ayi nartha daivatin padin ayiram stotram. Oru kuravum goda adha, oru rogam goda adha, oru pavivalum goda adha. We not go by our feeling. We cannot go by our circumstances. We know we move by faith in the word of God. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Beloved, church is the best irrigated orchard in the face of the earth. Amen. The body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ is the very best irrigated, praise God, orchard in the face of the earth. 
You may ask, yeah, Pastor, why do you say that? If you read Psalms 46, verse 4, there is a river, praise God, that makes the city of God glad. Amen. Praise God. It is not by itself. There is a stream from the river. I mean, in my language, there is a, a canal, a pipeline, a tunnel. It is being flowing into every city of God. If you are a vessel of the living God, there is a river that flows from the throne room of God and its river comes through the channel exclusively, channeled in your life that make you glad. Whatever may be the situation, you sit on the word of God, start praising God. This river of life flowing with joyful, gushing waters comes through the channel. And it gets in your, in your, in your, in your system Amen. and makes you glad. Then you start praising God in a very different way. Praise God. This morning, my God is, as the psalmist says, my God is made known in Judah. They even who they are president again. Praise God. In the travel, number of the Kuri Kimondalo, number of the number of the president, or a political party, or a Padanaram Bir Gudumbala. The political party is really made known who they are. In the Yavale Pato Ambo Arud on Uro Bishwasila, if Patron Tulla, Devas and Lelangudi, Kartamini Ara Dikimbol, God is made known. Praise Devon Namade Ara Tin Kude, Devon Prisnavagana. Ningle part of Adamol, Burde, Vadikal, Devota, Prisna Makunaya, or responsibility number exercise Yana. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Nana the Varever, they were a little Yanichita, Praise the Shangle, they were the little very part of the bridge of another. They were the Prisna Makuna, Arathan Hiller, Praise the Lord. I want the Nam out of eight to Melodicum. Praise God, nothing will stand against the name when we call upon Him. If you are a vessel of the living God and if you are making known His name in a time of worship, one thing is sure, He is going to be. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. If something is holding you back, re examine your way of worshiping Him. Praise God. Praise God. We may have challenges in life, but if you are willing to make known the name of the Lord, his, he will be utmost in your presence every time and all the time. Praise God, praise God. Let the word of God make you glad this morning as I try to open uh, before you a passage that I have been studying for some time, meditating for some time. I, I, I really got the affirmation to share this with you and I'm going to tell you this passage unfolding the challenge to every believer to inherit the promise of God. Unfolding the challenge to every believer to move in the list of people or believers or men of God who have their place as people who receive the promise of God. Praise God. Right from Genesis to all the way to the Old Testament to the New Testament, one thing is there. Our God is a God of promises. Amen. amen. If you believe so, you can say amen. amen. Our God is a God of making promises. Praise God. I go further. He is not really a God of making promises. He is a God who keeps the promises as well for you. Those who are really tuning to his word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So this, this morning, my, my, my introduction may go a little bit more. See, that is Guinness book. Anything that is done for the first time, if it is something extraordinary, it gets a place in the Guinness book. Back in the United States, United States, there is a system called the United States Patent Office. If you invent something right from the days of Alexander Bell onwards, onwards, people who made some invent inventions, you file a patent office. You file, you file it, you present it, you make something new, praise God, you write it, you, you present the fee, file the fee, then there are patent officers. They examine every record for the last 2,000 years and say if it is something new, if it is new, if it gets the approval of the United States Patent Office, you get a personal patent, praise God. You get a personal patent, and you can really use it for uh, whatever way you want to. Nobody can take it for at least 20 years, praise God. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals, uh, engineering companies, uh, uh, every field, carpenters, plumbers, everybody has made their own little inventions that has been so 
uh, useful for improving the life. That's how they are really investigating it and give a patent license. Praise God. So somebody who has somebody somebody's name getting in the in the in the patent list. Oh, everybody says, oh, my name is there in the patent list. Somebody says my name is in the Guinness Book. Somebody says my name is in the in the in the Hall of Fame book in uh, Cooperstown, or my name is there in the Hall of Fame uh, in, in 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 baseball. People have so many ways of elevating themselves to have a name. All these things will absolutely be done and be over the point they make their last breath. Gone. It has no value for them. Praise God. But there is something. Praise God. We re read in the book of Colossians. The Father of glory has made us to be partakers and inheritance of the promise of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That, that is my key word. The Father of glory, or oh, the source of light, has made us to be partakers, praise God, and inheritors of the promise of God. That is who we are. If you believe so, you can say amen. God has called you not to be a simple believer. He has called you to be a partaker and inheritor of all the promise of God available through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God. I'm a kingdom preacher. That's my joy. Wherever I get the opportunity, I just emphasize the kingdom of God. That's my, my, my way of preaching. That's what I am called for. So today my desire is, we believe, I believe that most of you are believers. So today the word of God is going to elevate you, uplift you, so that you will have a place. You have, a, you have a, an opportunity to, 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 to accept yourselves and see yourself. How you can, like the rest of the believers who move their name into the list. Among the people who receive the inheritance and the promise of God. That is where you want to be. This is my desire. Please turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Glory be to God. Chapter 6. Um, reading, it's a little bit, few verses to really make the context known to you. Uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 10, 11, and uh, 12. Mm. Mm. I want you all, if you have your Bible open, whether it is English or Malayalam or any other language, it doesn't matter. Please read. Please put your name there and read. Do not become sluggish, but imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. The instruction is very simple. Father, I thank you that the Spirit of God in us that speaks the truth of the Word of God. Father, also the Spirit of God is upon us, upon me. It is instantaneous. It is for a specific purpose. Father, I trust in that promise as I stand in the Word of God that you have a code and a written in my spirit to bring it to the body of believers. Father, I believe that the Spirit of God will accomplish the purpose. The Word is really sent forth here. Amen. Amen. It won't Come back empty-handed. Father, I thank you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Here the Hebrew believers, praise God, are, are very zealous believers. They are very hospitable. They are willing to do so many things. They are being commendated for their hard work for the kingdom of God. They are being appreciated for their love for the saints. They give everything to minister to every believer, every man of God visiting them. But the writer of the Hebrews saw something extraordinary being prepared that these believers are not being aware of. That's why in these words, if you study this passage, this is something inserted with the special instruction of the Spirit of God to the writer of Hebrews. As he's addressing this, even though he's telling some of the good things that God is going to remember of their good works, he's just giving them something extraordinary. That is... Don't get sluggish. That is not an encouraging word. Praise God. Hey, brother, don't be sluggish. Don't be silly. Nobody likes to hear that. Amen? But the Spirit of God is telling you it is good for you. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a rebuke, but it is reminding you. It is getting your attention. If you say everything is going is good, there is no need for correction. Sometimes correction comes with a word of 
little rebuke. Praise God. When my God rebuke uh, the chariots and the horses, praise God, they absolutely don't stop. They cannot come against you. That's what the psalmist says. He just rebuke the chariots and the horses so they cannot come against you. This is the way some of the enemy can come against you. God rebuke them. Praise God. In the above verses, we see that he's going to destroy the lightning flash of the enemy, the shields, the sword, and the weapons of war that is against you. He destroys it. But when the, when, the, when the chariots and the horses are coming against you, you cannot resist that with your, with, with your own power. God says, chariot, horses, you are rebuked. It happened in the seashore of Red Sea. That is the context. So when sometimes God rebuked things for you, in the same context, God is really reminding by his spirit, believers, Hebrew believers, don't be sluggish, don't be silly. You are so much doing so much for the kingdom of God, but you are still not there, getting you into the list among the believers who has inherited the promise of God. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? I think the Holy Spirit is true. Today, you can have a personal examination of your life. There are many promises of God flowing from the word of God, from the men of God, from the, from the, from the, from the body of Christ. In you know, your time of prayer, the word of God is flowing without any, any, any limitation. But how much are we appropriating and getting it, personalizing it, and taking it our own and moving into that place where I can hold on to the promise of God and say, Lord, here I am. Hallelujah. I believe your word. Praise God. You can believe your word, but the belief has turned into a faith. And with that faith, you speak the promise of God in its entirety. That's how we inherit the promise of God. Not alone. See, this is this, the next part is where people are getting a little bit misunderstanding. Here, the Bible writer very clearly says, if you want to move yourself into the list of the partakers and the inheritors of the promise of God, two things are absolutely necessary. There are other things. First, you need to be a believer. You should be serving God. But to take your name to the next level, it is through faith and patience. Through faith and patience. Praise God. I am going to take you first into an Old Testament character. It is Abraham. I'm, and because of the lack of time, I'm not going to go there in, in scriptural details. But you can really study it in your own time. Abraham was living with his dad. And his dad was an idol manufacturer maker. That was their business. There was told, get out of this place. Because he lost one of his sons. So they moved out. They came to Haran. While Abraham and Sarai and uh, his family with Terah was there in Haran, his dad passed away at the age of two or five. Then God spoke to Abraham and Sarai. Previously, Terah made a decision to move out of the land of Ur. I traveled there. I've been there. I, I, just, I just visited that place. I, I personally been there. Then he come to Haran. There, Terah died. Then God is calling Abraham and gave him Five or six promises. Praise God. From nowhere, Abraham is getting promises. He never heard of that. God personally appears to this guy. His heritage, his background is these guys who are making idol statues. That's their business. Hey, what, what type of God is this? He got honors and visit people from nowhere? Yes, he does. That is his sovereignty. That is his, his attribute. He see, he knows the end right from the beginning. So he, he calls Abraham. In his superior wisdom, he knows Abraham is an obedient man of God when he hears the voice of God. So Abraham listens. At the age of 75, get out of that place. I don't have the time to expand into all the way up to chapter 17. He, at, at, at the age of 75, God gave him a promise. And at 17, we will come to 17. He's almost 99 years old. 24 years passed. Some of the things were partially fulfilled. But one thing was really bothering him was, I have no uh, uh, sons. I have no inheritance. I have no uh, 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 sons to, to fulfill what you have told me, God. Because God called him and said, look at the sons, guys. Your, your generation shall be like the 
skies, uh, like the stars of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the skies. Nothing happened. How it is possible to hold on to a promise for uh, 24 years? Sarah is making all type of recommendations, and you know what happened in between? Abraham, against all hope, hoped in the Lord. <laughs> he says, God is told, he will do it. God said it, he will do it. With every resistance coming, every doubt and belief flaring upon Abraham. He may say, it may not be, maybe somebody come and told me like this. No, God told me, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He keep on saying this and resisting every enticement from every person, even Sarah, everyone in the family. He hold on 24 years. On the 24th year, God saw the faithfulness and the patience of this man. God really make a dinner appointment with him while he was in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the garden of Mamre. When you guys were singing the song, the message what I was trying to share was very much echoed in the song. Praise God. I, I just myself tuned to the word of God. I know this is a message for this church today. By the mouth of two, some are going to be elevated into be inheritors of the promise of God in your personal life, more than a general call. Praise God. So, I know my time, time is running around. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, fast forward. Praise God. The three angels came. God makes a dinner appointment with a person who waited upon the Lord in faith and in patience. Amen. I never heard anywhere in the word of God that God made a dinner appointment with anybody. Three angels came. Everybody say angels. It is the Christophany of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament with two other mighty angels. Came to Abraham's house. Oh. Then, hey, what you have been told, it is going to be fulfilled the next year. Then these two guys were hopeless. All normal human procreation ability has been passed away from their life many years ago. Sarai says, oh, great. Ha. Ah. She laughed horrifically inside. And the angels called them and uh, right and told, Sai, why did you laugh? No, no, I didn't laugh. No, no, you laughed. It is okay you laugh because this is impossible. Because God told him, I am the Lord of impossibilities. Nothing is impossible for you. That was the key word Abraham was holding when all this unbelief and doubt were coming against him. He hold on to the word of God. My God is a God of possibilities. All the impossibilities, it won't work, it won't work. I hear it every time. There are so many no sayers. This is not possible, this won't work out. But my God says everything is possible. He just hold on. He didn't make a commotion. He didn't make an emotion. When the waves and the billows of life was hitting him like a piercing arrow, he just said, my God said, so it is done. Amen. Sarai, my God said, it is done. Amen. Oh, my friend, my God said, it is done. Oh, my God spoke to me, it is done. Amen. Praise God, praise God. You know what happened? After the dinner appointment, God spoke to them face to face. I think this is called, a, you know, commenting, commenting this to mortal beings. I, I cannot, I, I wish I, I expand it more. God of Trinity with two mighty angels coming to a garden to honor the faith of a man. I cannot stand it when I read it. Who are we? Beloved. In your utmost time when you are like dust, when you hold on your faith in the word of God and in patience, before you move out of this world, the promise that you are holding on, God will reveal it. And before fulfilling it, he makes something extraordinary for you for honoring your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, have, I have stories of many young men who stood for Christ and his word. So Abraham has to wait for the fulfillment of the promise of God for almost 25 years. He had a, he had a very extensive eh, 
time to remain in patience. Before an year, before that actual process of the fulfillment of the word of God happened to their family, God gave him a royal treatment. Praise God. You know, when, when, when you are going to be honored for a, in a great stage or audience, the night before, it's a very common practice to give you a very honorable dinner, right? When you guys graduate or girls graduate from schools, there is a graduation dinner, right? Before you graduate in your faith and your patience, God will give you, a, God will execute something personal, extraordinary for you, beloved, if you hold on to the promise of God in your life. Praise God. This is not something I learned or studied. I received this from the word of God. I received it waiting in the presence of God. Now let me come on to another great man of God. These are four young mighty men, young warriors who came from their Hebrew background, came as slaves in the palace of Belshazzar. They came with a, a, a chains on their, hand, uh, on their hands and they were slaves. But by God's divine program, now they are elevated to the palace. Praise God. While they are there, something extraordinary came on their way. These are going to be trained in the Babylonian culture and they are going to be advisors of the king and the king's council in the land of Babylon. So, king ordered all this elected extraordinary men with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, personality, identity, ability to really uh, grasp and follow the patterns and the culture. Let them be given everything co-equal with what is being served to the king of the land. Who will reject that? Who will reject that? Who will reject that? Believe me, praise God, God. Thank you that I am not being put into that situation. <laughs> praise God for the mercy of God. Praise God. We read in Daniel, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, chapter 1, verse 8 to 12. You, you can read that for your personal study. This man, the master of the eunuchs, offered him. You get the same portion of the wine and the food and the meat. What the king is getting, so you are going to be extraordinary people. These guys went back to the room. The offer is good. The package is good. Oh, this is going to be. From slaves, we are going to be kings, princes in the land. So we should also follow the princess' way of lifestyle and food and uh, habit. But suddenly, the promise of God in their heart spoke. No. Sorry. Sorry. You are special people. You are special people. It is not with your ability that you became from your uh, slave yard to the courtyard. King, king's yard, you know. So, they decided in their heart, we are not going to get defiled by the food and the drinks and the things of the land of Babylon. Praise God. So, Daniel came and told to the master of the eunuchs, Sir, thank you for the offer. Praise God. No deal. No deal. <laughs> no deal. Remember, faith needs courage to express it correctly in the situation. If you are holding on to faith, if you are holding on to impatience, something comes with the help of the Spirit of God. This man spoke in courage. No deal, master of the eunuchs. We are people who have a covenant with a promise with God. We don't defile with the things of this land. This is who we are. Hey, I am in charge, not you. I am in charge, not you. You follow my orders. Yes, sir. If you order it, still it is our joy. But I am going to give you a counter offer. Please try us for 10 days. Please try us for 10 days. If you are right, we will come to you. He didn't say that. Please try us for 10 days. The man of the says, that's, that's not a bad idea. You guys give us vegetarian food grains, whatever it is, what they ask for, and examine our face with the co-equals, those who are among the group, and then you make the call. They hold on in patience, the faithfulness of God in, an, in a strange land. You know what happened in 10 days? God proved that he, those who hold on the promise of God in its entirety, in faith, without wavering, 
God came down and changed their personality by the working power of the Spirit of God. This boy, this young man, were so elevated, far above all the elevated class of people in the land of Babylon. Let me make it so fast. Come to book of Acts in chapter 16. There are two men in the New Testament. Paul and Silas. With divine appointment, they come to the land of Philippi. God opened numerous ways for them to really minister the word of God. As the word of God is growing, suddenly there was a, a, a girl, a slave girl, that's what they say, a fortune-telling girl who really says, these are great men of God and really troubling them. Spirit of God in Paul get so uh, strong and, and he turned back and said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of your ugly spirit. Nobody expected this. A word of commendation makes Paul to recognize the spirit and rebuked it. And suddenly what happened is, the master saw their prophet is gone because this girl is becoming normal and everything is working all right. They beat them, harass them, throw them into the innermost cell. Praise God. Praise God. Paul and Silas <laughs> and uh, thought that tonight, <laughs> after getting a great revelation and, and a ministry calling, come to Philippi. The first few days were good. Now, this is where we end up in the middle of the night. There was a little bit of drooling of pain and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, looking at the environment, but suddenly the Spirit of God inside of them really gave them a reminder. You are men of faith. We are men of faith. We are following a vision. We are following the, the direction of the Spirit of God. Situations cannot really hold us back. We read in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16, verse 25 to 28, the passage very much clearly says, in the middle of the night, they did the same thing they were to do, regardless of where their hands were chained up to the fetters or, 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 or tied to the post of the prison cell. They decided to do one thing. Whatever day possible, if there is an ounce of room, we are going to fill it with a, a gallon of praise. Amen. That's what they did. There is an ounce of space in the, in the prison. With the fetters, with the chains, they decided in the middle of the night, let us do what we are called to do. Let faith be in action. Our patience enabled us to get through so far up to the middle of the night. Now nobody is here. We have a good audience. We too, Paul, we are tied together with the post. Let us do what we do. We read Paul and Silas start singing in the spirit. Even though their hands and feet were tied and sheltered to the post there, they decided to sing in the spirit because Luckily, the, 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 the people in that jail didn't know the power of praise. They didn't know that God is going to be made known in the prison cell through the praises of Paul and Silas on the middle of the night. As they praised, as they sang, Amen. praise God, my time is over. Praise God. You know what happened? Hallelujah. Suddenly, <laughs> from nowhere, Paul and Silas never expected this. Did they know? They didn't expect this. They said suddenly there was an earthquake. The chains were broken. The fetters, iron fetters were broken. And they were free. And the doors were suddenly open. The iron gates of the prison, innermost multiple layer of jails, gates were open. And suddenly there is a, 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 a jailer. I think we sang it in Malayalam. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What shall I do to be saved? There is a role reversal. Praise God. If you hold on to faith, and impatience, and do the things we are called to do according to the word of God in your lowest time, someday you will find yourself in the middle of the night. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Person, jailers, the, the chief says, he took the sword to kill himself because he lost all control. What I see there is, when the power of God comes, there is an exchange of power, exchange of authority. Praise God. 
when some authority is enticing you, enslaving you, putting you, whether it is princess of darkness, whether it is circumstances, whether it is situates, you hold on to faith uh, and stay in, in patience uh, and exercise your courage. There may be a role reversal. The kingdom of darkness will be subdued uh, under the feet and the authority of a child of God who hold on to the word of God and uh, resonate uh, and worship uh, in spirit and in truth. Praise God, praise God. Let me summarize. This is what the writer of Hebrews is reminding. That's why he just added a slight word of strong reminder, don't be sluggish. I outlined you this day how to hold on to the promise of God. Sister, brother, listening to me, this is not a message just to take it and just put it aside on the back burner. There are so many promises of God. If we lay hands on the sick, they shall be healed, not it may be healed. Praise God. I believe. I, I, I step out and pray. Praise God. Even this morning, I just woke up and we were praying, Lord, there is so much contamination, you know, across the areas. People cannot come together and the enemy is trying to spread all type of fear in the name of Jesus. This is your authority. When you pray, my people who called upon the Lord and confess their oh, inabilities, iniquities, and call upon the Lord, he will hear from heaven and brings healing upon the land. When the church is in prayer, church becomes an authority of the people. The exchange and the authority that has to be exercised in the land comes back to the church, belongs to the body of Christ, where Jesus Christ is the head. Amen. Nobody in Philippi told that the Philippian jailer is going to fall down before a two prisoners and confess what shall you do to be saved. The whole family met Jesus through that endeavor. In a time of trial, in a time of difficulty, in a time when you are at the lowest place, hold on to faith. Hold in patience and exercise your courage. Don't do it in simple mental exercise. This is what is going to empower you. Believe and, and you keep on exercising it. It gives you faith to stand on. This morning, by believers, the Spirit of God is having a plan for you. Praise God. Don't take it lightly. Move yourself in the place that God has a, 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 a specific location for you. That is... Move your place among the list of believers who has inherited the promise of God. Amen. When you stand before there, you will read many. May your name be there. It is my prayer. It's my desire. Father, I thank you for helping me to bring forth the oracle of the word of God. The spirit of God in me and the spirit of God upon me. Lord, with, with my insufficiencies, inadequacies, Lord, I was explaining the oracle of the truth that was laid in my heart. I delivered it. And thank you, Lord, for the move of God. Some of them who has heard according to your divine counsel. Oh, Father God, today move themselves. Father, Lord, their situation be changed in the authority of the name of Jesus. Father, I believe and declare by your stripes people are healed in the church today. I believe because all things are possible to those who believe. My God is a God of possibilities. Some of the prayers request that has been prayed. I believe and declare that the Lord has answered the prayer of this church so that this church will become a, a beacon of light, a source of refuge and strength to the people who come here and those who are still outsiders be gathered into this place. Amen. Father Lord, the mountain of the Lord's house, the Lord's house established upon this mountain, in this tree be exalted far above all other mountains in the land. Let there be prophetic utterances. Oh, work of healing. Let people be filled with the Spirit of God and prophesy and interpret the truth and the oracle of God so that the body of Christ will be inspired, instructed, and be built on Christ the solid rock. Thank you for speaking, speaking through me, Lord. All glory, honor, and make this a blessing. In Jesus' most holy name I pray.